being in a tight-knit group over many years, you learn to be... Like a, a benevolent gang. Yeah. Like a group of musical troubadouring chimps on the road. <laughs> <laughs> America is such a huge place. It feels so varied from state to state. It's quite nice for us to just feel like we're experiencing that. So we get our home pleasures mostly from home. And then it, we feel like we want to experience stuff when we come out on the road. When we first started, we bought an old post van. This thing would only ever do like 60 miles an hour tops. Uh, not necessarily true. As the designated driver <laughs> of the said postal van, it could go 80. Downhill. Down a hill. Down, down yeah. a hill, yeah. <laughs> it was awesome, though. We called it Lissandra. We gave it a name. Yeah. It was, like, basically our home for the whole first time. And we would go around playing shows around the UK that we booked ourselves, and we would just be like, does anyone want to have us in their house? And we'll provide some entertainment and then trash it for you. And uh, people were surprisingly willing to invite us in. Here is the uh, living room. Got a couple of balaclavas. In case it all goes a bit, I don't know. This is my sleepwear. We got a bus at the beginning of 2008, just after our first record had come out, and it was the most exciting thing ever at the time. And we just operated it as a moving party wagon because we were just like, oh my god, we've got this like moving hotel room. Oh, oh, here it goes! It's going. It's going. Oh, we're on this thing. And we're driving overnight and we're sleeping the whole time. As soon as it stops, as soon as you wake up, you just want to get the hell out of here. And then we go and, you know, we scatter around whichever city we're in and cancel sound check because we're too hungover and then start drinking. Yeah. Basically, the whole objective is just to get the show out of the way so you can have a really good party. Sometimes I wonder, like, even, even as an English person, <laughs> the level of sarcasm is so high, I can't well, tell Well, am you. I joking? Maybe I'm not. <laughs> Riddle me this. <laughs> We're probably like the most inefficient sound checking band of all time as well. Like, our crew hate us for it. A lot of bands know how to take care of themselves and don't subscribe to a lot of the trappings of being on tour. And we don't do that fully. You know, like, we drink quite a lot and we like to party and we like the social aspect of touring. We make touring more punishing than it needs to be, but also more fun. It's good that it's a grind. You have an enemy when you're touring, whether that is jet lag or a hangover. All of those things make us play better. Anyone who, who spends a lot of time with an instrument or any sort of creative pursuit, it's kind of lonely. You're not part of the general rhythm of people's lives, just in your own head the whole time. Getting to play shows, it's the payoff in certain ways, because you give so much to the writing process that playing live is the way of filling back up. I could go on a drum on a laptop and you could just have your phone. When you come on tour, it's like the most instant way of actually connecting and realising that what you do has resonance outside of your own little world and knowing that there's people that want to jump around and who have been waiting for you. <laughs> it's The way you feel during a gig is such a natural high. It just can't really be matched by anything else. It's an addiction, I guess. That's the thing that's always been there, chasing those special nights. That's what it's all about. Yeah.